and we will sing this song. I am satisfied with Jesus in my heart. I am satisfied with Jesus in my heart. I am satisfied with Jesus in my heart. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. Cause I know too much about him. I know too much about him in my heart. Yes, I am satisfied with Jesus. I am satisfied with Jesus in my heart. Okay, our scripture reading will be coming from Ephesians 6 chapter, and I'll read verses 13 through 17, and it reads as follows. Wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith. Wherefore, ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Shall we pray? Dear most gracious crying and heavenly Father, it is once again that we Find ourselves in the house of prayer. Father, we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we lift up our whole heart to you. And we let our spirit connect with your spirit. And Father, we just thank you for allowing us to come together in true worship. Then Father, I ask that you touch every one of us, whether we are on Zoom or in person or on Facebook, or you too, Father, just touch right now, because we all stand in need of a touch from you. And I thank you in advance for answering this prayer as we pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Having been led as we believe by the spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior and on the profession of our faith, Having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into the covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of the church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children and to seek salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattletelling, backbiting, and sets of anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer and aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feelings and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior, to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and principles of God's word. 
Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Today, the message is standing firm for Christ. Amen. In Christ. Before we start, let's let me do the altar prayer. Dear most kind, kind, gracious Heavenly Father, I come to you making an intercessory prayer. Father, I ask that you just heal and touch the sick and shut in everywhere. Father, there's so many that's sick among us, and we are sick from so many different things and ailments. But Father, we asking you to touch and heal because you are the healer. You are the bomb in Gilead, and you are still healing. We just have to believe. And Father, I ask you to touch and heal right now. I don't remember all of the names, but there's the Wallaces, there's the Samuels, and there's the Pringles that suffer from uh, the loss of a loved one. Father, I ask you just to comfort them right now, Father. You said in your word, you will be with them even in these dark days. You are through your rod and your staff. And Father, we just believe in you right now because you said it and that we know that your word is true. Then Father, I ask that you just breathe on this church, Shepherd Ministry. Breathe on each and every one of us who's present, regardless of what platform that we are, we are on. We are still your children. We still have made our way to the house of worship because the true church is in every one of us. But you said, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together so that we might study and hear the word of God and be fed, fed spiritual food. And Father, I just, I just pray that you just, not only this church, but other churches that who are open, Lord, just breathe on them right now as I'm praying this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Once again, standing firm for Christ. And uh, I'm coming out of 1 Peter 5 and 9 and Romans 12 and 2. And why am I bringing this message? Because it's an encouragement to let us know that we who are in Christ, yes, Satan is on us, and he used every tactic possible to cause us doubt or to derail our walk with him. And every now and again, we need somebody to tell us you have to stay in code. You have to stand firm in your faith and your belief in Jesus Christ. Because he's true to his word that he said, I will never, ever leave you nor forsake you. And I just went straight on and forgot to read this, <laughs> this scripture. Let me just backtrack a moment and read 1 Peter 5 and 9. He said, who resists, stand fast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And that says a lot. And Romans 12 and 2 says this, and be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may be able to prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Now that I can get back to work. As I was saying, we need that encouragement. I myself need that encouragement. Don't think for a moment that Satan is not attacking me. It's all over. It, and, and that's exactly what the first Peter said. Whom? That's all of us. We resist and stay faith, steadfast in our faith in Jesus Christ because we will be successful. Jesus Christ has already told us, I have already overcome the world. Whatever you are going through in this life, on this Christian journey, 
just know that you're not alone. Satan is set out to destroy everything that is good because God is good and he brings about good. But let me just tell you this, Satan is a defeated foe. He will never ever accomplish, destroy God's chosen people. And every believer in Jesus Christ is God's chosen people because he knew from the beginning of time who was going to accept his spiritual invitation to come and be saved by accepting his son Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Because one day I teach that lesson by our preordination. We were preordained from the foundation of the world to be followers of Christ. And there's the difference between a follower of Christ and a fan of Christ. A follower of Christ mm -hmm. is going to stand firm for Christ while in Christ. Now, that's the mouthful. We're going to stand firm because, for Christ because he is the overcomer of the world. He has defeated, already defeated Satan. He is our warrior and he is our helper. When we need him, we just call on him because he told us to cast all of your cares on me and I will take care of you. Now, God, don't lie. He ain't lied yet. Mm -hmm. He sees all and he can do all because he's sovereign and he's all powerful. Okay, and we must remain connected to Christ, our power source. He is our power source. The God, the Holy Spirit who lives in us, that's Christ's spirit, is stronger and much bigger than the God of this world. Yes, Satan thinks he's all powerful and he will, he will have us thinking that he's all powerful. And the truth of what God said is not what God said. He's using that same tactic that he used with Eve back in the garden when he deceived her by he telling her, God didn't say you would die if you eat of that forbidden fruit. That's not what God said. And that's exactly what God said. He said, at the moment you, the day that you eat of that fruit, you will die spiritually and Satan fooled her and he still fooled many today because we see how rampant sin is and I mean it's coming at and in, in, uh, in all forms and all formats and I mean he's coming it's just you, you, I mean it's just like uh, you need deep in alligators trying to drain the pump now what do I mean by that we're in a sinful world. And if you consider it the swamp because of the, all of the immoralities and the evilness that's going on, but yet we as believers in Christ are the salt and light of the world. And we have to remain steadfast in our commitment to him and proclaiming the word of, and, and the truth uh, of his word to others. So somebody in this month is going to see, they're going to hear, and they're going to change their life. They're going to accept it. But we cannot be swayed by all of Satan and his lies. And that's why it is so important for us to know the truth of God's word for ourselves. We have to know the truth then we have to be committed to standing firm on the truth of God's word. And there's nothing but the truth of God's word is gonna carry us through. It's gonna make us have that confidence when we can remember that Christ has already overcome the word. We are more than conquerors because of what Christ does and because of the Holy Spirit who lives in us and our commitment and our dedication 
to live for Christ and said, I don't care how bleak the situation yet, I'm gonna stand on the truth. I'm gonna stand if nobody stands but me. Mm -hmm. And I was taught early in my life that when you're standing for the truth and what's right, you may have to stand by yourself. I see. Yeah. But then when, I mean, you look at it, when the God is with us, you're never alone. But when they say standing by yourself, your friends might leave you, your family might leave you, but you're going to stand anyway. You have to make that determination. And this comes to my mind. One faithful believer would put a thousand of Satan demons to flight. Mm. One, just one of us. This thing, all of us here today, on this line, on Facebook, YouTube, will take and they say, I want one of us, don't put a thousand. And we multiply those, but tell me so many of Satan demons, 10,000, flee it. And the word says, if you draw closer to God, Satan will flee from you. Are, am I saying that we are not close to God? No, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is this. Satan is on his job 24-7. And he have ramped up his attacks on God's people because he knows his time is about up. When God is going to return and he's going to put his foot on Satan's head and Satan, he's going to be banished to the pit of hell. Where he come from? See, now, hell wasn't made for God's people, but we can go there if we choose not to accept his son, Jesus Christ, as our personal Savior. That, that, it's a choice. But, and that's why I, I felt so encouraged to bring another message of, to encourage us. Stand firm. Stand firm. For Christ. Stand firm for Christ, regardless of what it is. When our kids seem to turn their backs on me, or Satan capture their mind for them to say harsh things to us or do things that normally they would not do, we just take it to the Lord and say, Lord, you take it, but I'm going to stand and keep on standing for Christ because I know my redeemer lives. I know where my help comes from, and it comes from the Lord. You know, prayer changes things, but our faith is going to unlock the door to that prayer. You know, we cannot doubt our prayers when we go to God with something. And I'm telling you today that sin is all around us, as we all know. And it keeps us praying, not only for ourselves, but the sinful condition of this world, asking him to make a change. And it brings to mind 2 Chronicles 7, 14, when it says, if my people, my people are the believers, that's the faith community, will humble themselves and pray. He got asked and said, now I want you to pray and sincerely pray. And turn from your wicked way. So in other words, we in the faith community get our house in order. Yeah. Judgment is going to start in the household of faith. We are the bride of Christ. Christ is not coming back here for no great big edifice. And neither is he coming back for a church or people that who is living unholy and living unholy he said his bride is going to be what pure and spotless without spot or wrinkle that's who he's coming back for so in order for us to be right we have to keep ourselves devoted and committed to christ and that means we got to keep standing firm for him and standing on the promises of his word we have to stand there this is not an overnight success. 
Because when we start this faith journey, uh, this faith walk, it is a journey. It is mean we have to persevere. It's not a sprint that, oh, I can take a 40 yard dash and I'm there. No, it's not. It is an endurance race. That means we have to stay grounded in the word of God. And as our scripture and Ephesians 6, 13 through 17, it gave us our body on that we must wear daily because we are in a spiritual warfare. And let me say this, God dressed us in what we need to stand firm. He gave us all defensive weapons, but one. The sword of the spirit is God's word. And we can put Satan to flight when we take that sword out and just wield it. And that's the spelling. And each time Christ was tempted in the wilderness, he used the word of God. To put Satan in his place. Let me ask this question. If Satan tempt God's only son, who is God, try to derail him from his mission, what do you think he'd do for you and I? Hmm. Don't, don't, trust me. He's tempting us. Just as he tempted Jesus in the wilderness, he tempted, he's tempting us. And how did Jesus handle it? He told him to get behind me, say, don't you know that man has that live by bread alone, but by every word of by every uh, the word of God. That's what he told. Him. God Christ, you. The word of God to put Satan in his place. We have to know the truth of God's word. Take it and you can take it to take the fight to Satan. When we see wrongdoing, we just have to call it out and say, Scripture says this. And I always tell them, if you want to get mad at me by what I say, this, then you're getting mad at the scripture. Because that's that's what I'm I'm Face mm -hmm. in mind. And I take it to scripture in a heartbeat, you know. Satan has, he's a masterful strategist. He devises clever schemes in order to derail us, to get us off of our square. But when we are grounded, and the truth of God's word. He will not be so successful. And I mean, he has some masterful disguises to come at us. And as I said earlier, he'll use those closest to us that have put a dagger in our heart that we have to go down on our knees right. and call on Jesus. But one thing about our Lord and Savior will not leave us. He'll pick us up off our knees. He'll answer our prayer when we go to him in prayer. Because he knew we was going to be in this fight. God is not just no little small God. He's all sovereign. He's all knowing. And he sees all. He sees the trouble coming before we do. But he's there for us to call on. Him. And he is so true and so dependable and so trustworthy. He just, just walks right along. And when it gets so bad, he'll pick us up and carry us through our troubles. And this it, it, it reminds me of this song. Lord, don't move my mountain. Show me the way. Just help me to climb the mountain. And it is so profound. We're going to have some rough days. We are having some rough days. We are climbing 
high mountain, but we, we, we give us strength and our faith will increase our strength and our trust in him will increase when he said, Lord, don't move the mountain, but just help me to climb the mountain. I, because when I get to the top of the mountain, when I get through this situation, I can look back. I don't have to wonder how I got old. I already know how no. I got old. Yes, Lord. That you brought me through these rough days because we stood fast in Christ. We knew where our help was coming from. Man may can't help me with the problems that I'm facing. I may can't help you with the problem that you're facing. But I know who can. And that's Jesus Christ. And when we go to Christ on behalf of one another, be going to our help, our power soul. Remember, he is all powerful. He does not have some power. He said all power. When he got up out that grave on Sunday morning, he said, what? I have all power, both in heaven and in earth, is in my hand. So why in the midst of our storms, we go to somebody else? And I'm not saying don't talk to your friends because we all have to have somebody to talk to. But the best one at the dare, don't forsake, talking to Jesus about the problem. We are in a spiritual warfare. I mean, let me just tell you that we're in a spiritual warfare. And it started back in heaven. And most of us wasn't even there between God and Satan. And when Satan, oh God, I will have more followers than you. See, God created Satan. Satan mm -hmm. got so beside himself that he wanted to be more powerful than God. And when God told him, listen, you will never have more followers than me because if my people does not cry out and stand for me, I will have the rocks to cry. Yes. I don't need the rocks crying to Jesus for in my place. When I know who he is, when I know what he's done for me, I know the storm that he had brought me through. And my attitude is a one of gratitude and thanksgiving. They said, Lord, I thank you for bringing me. That's what we should do because we, we're in a storm. We seem like we're going in one right out of the other. That's right. It never ends. So we have to keep on standing and calling on Jesus and walking in his righteousness. Cover the doorposts of our physical house and our spiritual house with his shed blood. Because he is true to his word, just as I have told you before, he will never ever leave, nor will he forsake you. He's there. And when we uh, can recognize that I was created in the image and likeness of God. And once I believed and accepted Jesus Christ, my fellowship with God the Father has been restored. And now I am that new creature, I have royal blood running through my vein. I am those peculiar people that the world hates. And mm. it hates me because it hated Jesus Christ who came to save the world. How foolish is that? I'm going to hate the very person who came to save. But many, the world does. But we who have seen the light, and have accepted our new life in Christ. We are in to stand firm and trust me when I say this. 
the God, the Holy Spirit that lives in us will enable us once we commit ourselves. I'm not going to let nothing turn me around from my heavenly journey, nor separate me from the love of God. Why? Because God gave his best for me. Please make it personal. God gave his best for me. He gave his best. He gave all he had for me so that I would have not only eternal life, but I have a restored relation, intimate relationship with him. I want that I can call in the middle of the night when I can't get my children. I can call in the middle of the night when I can't call mother or father. He is the one that I can call and I can be assured of an answer. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of God that said, I just want you to be in fellowship with me because I loved you. I gave you my best. I'm here for you. Everybody who believes in Jesus Christ can call God anytime, all at the same time, and we'll never get a busy seat. Mm -hmm. That's a mighty God. Hear me when I say this. If all of us on this line right here, right now, was just called on God, we will never get a busy seat. You can pick up my telephone. If three or four of us get too many trying to call, it's going to get busy. Not so with God. I ask again, what a mighty God that we serve. He's a God that is worthy of our total commitment. He is worthy to suffering because our suffering is pale in comparison to what he suffered those many hours out there on care. And in our suffering that we are doing now is pale into the joy and the reward that we're going to receive in the future. Christ told us when he was here on earth, he said, yes, you're going to suffer because the world don't like you. You're going to suffer, but don't worry about it. I got it. Just bring me your burdens. I'll lift your burdens. Mm -hmm. See, even then, God has shown his love and how much he cares and all of his protection that he surrounded us with. Picture this. We are hot and we have all of our beautiful hedges surround. That's a form of protection. Look at God as our hedge of protection that he has around us. And when he gave us help, our body um, put on every day because we are walking in this sinful world. But when we are wearing and manifesting the righteousness of Christ, we are shining the light in a darkened world. Stand firm for Christ. And let me say to the church, And every believer, because we collectively makes up the church, individually we are believers. Satan is trying his best to destroy us. And he's doing it the world over. But let me remind you two things. The church is the bride of Christ. Christ will take care of his bride. Because one day he's coming back for his bride. And every believer is part of Christ's church. And trust me, when we are thinking and going through our tribulation, when Christ said, I build my church and the very gates of hell, and this includes Satan, 
will not destroy his church and his words will, will not prevail against it. That means you will never destroy my church. And every believer is part of Christ's church and he will not allow Satan to destroy us. And that's why I'm encouraging everybody, stand firm for Christ because he's standing firm for you. Keep your commitment, your love, and your devotion to Christ because we cannot have, there is no other Savior that loves us to the magnitude of what Christ does. He died for us and he's keeping us through his spirit who lives in us. And he is our all in all. When we get so bogged down with the troubles of this world, and we seem to does not have any place to turn. Hmm. But if you have Christ, he's all you need. He's all that you need. Because he says what? Well, I will supply all of your needs. That includes your physical needs and includes your spiritual needs and your protective needs. But all is all inclusive, no matter what it is. God got it. So when Satan tries to make us fearful, God told us, fear not. He didn't give us a spirit of fear. He gave us one of power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind, just to think, who am I? I am a child of the king. Yep. He gave us a power, a spirit of discernment to see Satan in his many, many masterful disguises when he's coming at us. He did. But remember this, we have a warrior who will fight your battles. Who will fight your battles. Look how he won the battle at Jericho. Just go to Jesus. Let him take care of it. He will fight your battles. And I know I have said this several, several times. Stand firm in Christ. Because I'm trying to make a point as I get ready to close. And if I can give you just a couple of examples. Who stayed faithful to Christ was Noah when God told him to build the ark. All of the sin that was around him and how they mocked him, how they scorned him. But he never, ever gave up and being obedient to his call to God. Look at Paul, how he was beaten, put in jail for preaching Christ. But he never, ever stopped preaching Christ. When he was locked in that Roman jail, him and his companion Silas. Did they get down? Did they give up? No, they didn't. They just went on and had a prayer meeting and said, God, you can deliver us. I know you can. Look at the Hebrew boys. When they refused to bow down to the king to worship his God, he said, no, we're not going to bow to your God. I don't care if you put us in the fiery furnace. I'm not going to bow to your God. The only God that I'm going to bow to is the one who is the God of all, the creator and the sustainer. And they didn't bow. But guess what? You know the story. God got in the fiery furnace. I did. 
He'll do the same thing for you and I today. He'll get in our fiery furnace with us. The speed, stand firm for him. When they threw Daniel in the line, then he said, well, that's okay. We'll just go on and walk around. And when they go to sleep, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to use them for a pillar. <laughs> Don't buy the Satan goals. That's all I'm saying. Stand firm in your faith in Christ. He will deliver us because he is our deliverer. And as I get ready to close here, stay obedient to your call. Stand firm. And why I say stay obedient to your call? Because we were all called by God to do his will and for his purpose. We are to make disciples through our witness, our word, and our lifestyle. And we are to stand firm because we are the righteous of Christ through his atonement works on Calvary's cross. And all who do die, believe in him, died with him on Friday. But we rose with him on Sunday morning. And we are new creatures in Christ as we live in harmony with the Father. God, the Holy Spirit, lives in every believer. As we walk the faith walk with Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, is with us every step of the way. So I say to you today, stand firm in your faith in Jesus Christ. Proclaim the good news of the gospel with boldness and your reward is in heaven. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for the message. Father God, I, I pray that whoever is listening, that somebody, man, woman, boy, or girl, but re commit themselves to start this faith walk and commit to standing firm on the faith. And we who are believers will recommit ourselves that said by saying, for God I live and for God I die. Regardless of what the situation is, I'm going to stand firm and my faith in Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God be with you. God be with you. Until we meet again.